Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining me on de Demystifying SBA Loans. My name is Mark Raines. I'm with Synovus Bank. I'm the SBA lender for uh, Synovus uh, throughout the, the state of South Carolina. Uh, I've been in banking for 26 years and been uh, an SBA lender for a little over four years. Um, so I've worked in different capacities within the bank at, in retail side, on the commercial side, small business side. So and now I'm, um, I've been uh, working the niche uh, of SBA lending uh, for like the last four years. Uh, I am here in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, so but again, I do travel and uh, am everywhere uh, within the state of South Carolina. Um, so today's presentation is on demystifying SBA loans. Um, so there's a lot, a, a lot to uh, SBA loans that, um, but they're not as uh, crazy as everybody thinks. So um, the agenda today, what I want to do, of course, introduce myself, uh, then we'll go through the business statistics, um, what makes a good SBA loan. Um, talk a little bit about the business plan, the five C's of credit, capital needs, uh, collateral, uh, equity, uh, SBA loan overview, benefits uh, to an SBA loan, uh, SBA loan types, SBA 7A uh, use of proceeds, and eligibility. Um, so, uh, so the first thing I wanna do is talk about business statistics. So if you're going in, going into business, um, just just some information need to need to know. Um, there are more than 32 million, 32 and a half million small businesses in the United States. Small businesses employ 59 million people in the United States. Uh, only 40 percent of those small businesses are profitable. 30 percent lose money and 30 percent break even. Uh, 50 percent of small businesses fail in the first five years. 21 and a half percent in the first year, 30 percent in the second year and 70 percent in the 10th year. So even out 10 years, they can even fail. So the longer the company has in business, though, the more likely it is to stay in business. But why do businesses fail? Uh, they fail because they run out of money. They're in the wrong market. You know, they target the, the wrong uh, demographic um, lack of research. Uh, maybe a bad business partner or bad marketing, um, not an expert in that field. 23% um, of the, the people that fail do, they have the wrong team in place. So you don't have the, the right employees. 19% um, fail because of their competition. 42% um, fail because of the lack of interest in the products or services that you offer. Uh, one in three restaurants won't survive their first year. In 2023, just to give you some statistics on the SBA lending piece of it, uh, the SBA approved 57,000 loans, totaling $27.5 billion. And an average 7A loan was $479,000 or 480,000. It's quite a big number, okay? Startup costs, they it vary wide, varies widely between what, uh, what type of business model you, you're running, the location, the industry, uh, but on average, first year costs are, are somewhere between 30 and 40,000. That's, those aren't costs to, you know, build out a location or those are just running costs. So outside of what you would, uh, you're just your normal working capital. <clears throat> so SBA, uh, an SBA loan overview. What, why, why the SBA? Well, the SBA came about in 1953 by President Eisenhower. Um, and and the, the main focus is to aid, assist, counsel, protect the small interests or protect the interests of small business concerns to preserve free competitive enterprise and maintain and strengthen the economy of our nation. So how, how did it, that's why, okay? But what does the SBA loan do? Well, it gives the bank a guarantee, okay? Because the SBA doesn't actually lend money. 
the SBA comes to lenders like Synovus and other banks and other uh, financial tech firms, that type of thing. And they say, hey, you have to follow our rules. And if you follow our rules, we're going to give you, in the case of a, an SBA 7A loan, we're going to give you a guarantee of 75%. So you've got a riskier loan, let's say a startup. They're going to, and over the first year, let's say it does fail and they borrowed a $100,000. They're guaranteeing that after we liquidate all the business assets, any personal assets that were pledged, that they're going to give us 75% of whatever's left. Okay. So that's what they're guaranteeing. So that means the bank is only truly going to be uh, at a loss of 25%. So, or in this case, 25,000. So that's, um, that's where the, where it makes the banks feel more comfortable because there's less loss that, uh, that they're possibly going to have. Um, so what is, what's considered a riskier loan? Well, I just mentioned one and that's a startup business, um, an unsecured loan. So you don't have all the collateral you need. Well, that doesn't necessarily uh, negate a reason to be able to get an SBA loan. Uh, but a conventional loan, you're not going to probably be able to get less money down. Uh, industry related, maybe a riskier industry. Pro projections based loans. Startup businesses are projections based loans, but you can also have a company that that where you're looking to grow. You've been in business, let's say, five years, but you're looking to grow into a different market. So you have to use projections to actually get the capital to buy new equipment, to buy uh, working capital, that type of thing. So therefore we use projections based upon what, what you've done historically in your, your current market and then something uh, in the new market that you're going into. And you just have to tell us the reason why those projections are where they are, okay? So another thing that you have to do and I, uh, is, is something called eligibility. So you come to a bank, and you say, hey, I think I need an SBA loan. Well, you don't know um, whether or not you need an SBA loan. And that's why you have somebody like myself uh, to have that, 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 um, that discussion for you. So the first, the number one thing that we do is we want to protect that guarantee. Okay. Because we want that government guarantee. That's why we do the SBA loans. Um, and in order to get that, that guarantee, is we have to go through some eligibility criteria. We have to make sure that it's an operating business. We have to make sure it's a for-profit business. It's located in the United States. It meets the size requirements of the SBA. And there's a, a demonstrated need for that credit, okay? Now, we're not gonna be, there's for things that we're not gonna say that it's eligible is for nonprofits, okay? Financing businesses, passive businesses. Uh, if you don't know what a passive business is, that could be an investment property. Um, life insurance companies, uh, like if it was Allstate, okay? Not the agency, but a company like Allstate. Um, but you can actually go and, let's say, purchase or start an Allstate uh, agency. Um, so there's a little bit of difference there. Um, of course, I already mentioned that it has to be located in the United States. So outside of the United States, we can't can't uh, do any SBA lending. Pyramid schemes or plans, gambling, illegal activity, religious activities, anybody who's had prior loss to government. So that could be student loans. That could be other SBA lending. It could be um, emergency disaster relief uh, lending. It could be in most recent. We've had those PPP loans. Um, you may not have paid back in time or, or gotten it um, uh, forgiven in time. And so that's still outstanding. So, um, and again, any, any speculative lending. Other eligibility um, considerations. Uh, so the SBA does a deeper dive uh, than a conventional lender would do. Um, yes, we all look at credit history, but then we also look at are there any outstanding lawsuits? Um, do you have a criminal, a, a criminal history um, within the last six months? Uh, divorce, what kind of impact is that divorce? Because that kind of goes with lawsuits or is that um, intense? 
uh, tax liens that are outstanding. Um, if, uh, is, if the company is a non-U.S. owned, it has to be uh, owned 51% or more by a U.S. citizen. Um, filed tax returns. This is a big one. Um, we have to look at, at your taxes to make sure that you are paying taxes because um, that's kind of how this, this program, the SBA program, actually runs off of. And, of course, if you had any uh, past bankruptcies or foreclosures. <clears throat> so why SBA financing? Well, SBA financing allows you to amortize a lot longer period than a conventional loan. Let's say you were going to do a startup business. You didn't own the real estate um, and you needed some startup money uh, and you didn't have hardly any collateral. OK, um, you're looking at maybe three years that we would be we would allow you to pay that back. Doing the SBA financing. We can actually do we can we can extend those terms out to 10 years, which is huge for your your cash flow. So that's that's the big reason right there. Um, lower equity requirements, even though you're coming to the bank to um, <clears throat> to to actually borrow money, you still have to have some money to put into the deal. OK, again, startup situation, um, you need to at least put in for Snovis 20 percent for um, for other banks, other areas. It could be 10 percent. It just depends on the strength of you as an individual. Uh, it also depends on your experience and it, and it depends on um, uh, the uh, strength of your the business plan that you have. Um, so. As I've mentioned quite a few times, SBA will allow for collateral shortfall, um, but on the conventional side, that's that's not going to be um, that's not going to happen in most cases, especially if you're talking about a startup. Um, but the SBA does allow for uh, a collateral shortfall as long as all the all the assets of the business and all any and all assets personally have actually been taken. Okay. And then, of course, the bank, from a credit standpoint, just decides whether or not your particular situation uh, justifies an approval. Um, and then no renewal risk. So a lot of people don't uh, realize with small business loans that you do have what's known as balloons. Usually you, you'll hear of a commercial loan having a five-year balloon, and but the payment is based upon a 10 year amortization or the payments based off a 15 year amortization. But every five years, the bank looks at it again. With an SBA loan, there is no balloons, okay? Um, which that helps out, there's no origination fees. There's no um, future appraisals that have to be done or additional fees that are gonna come in, that you're gonna come in contact. So that's another reason why to do SBA financing. Now, um, we talked about eligibility. We talked about why SBA. Now, the big thing that that we, whether it's conventional or in the SBA, we still, uh, from a lending standpoint, we still look at the five C's of credit. Okay, and the five C's of credit are your character, the capacity to pay pay the loan back, the capital. That's the money that you're going to invest in the in the company. The conditions, what the industry and, and uh, actually looks, what the economy looks like, and of course the collateral. Okay, so those are the five C's of credit that, from an underwriting standpoint, we take a look at, um, and we have to feel comfortable with it. Usually, it's one of these things that the bank feels that we can forego. For instance. And, and use and when we're using it, an SBA loan from a um, conventional standpoint, not necessarily. You have to hit all these um, five C's of credit. Character usually is not something that any, whether it's an SBA loan or conventional loan, um, that's something that we want on every single loan. We want to know that the people that we're doing business with have good character. So they have not good character means they have good credit history. 
Um, their background is, is clean. They don't have any outstanding lawsuits or criminal history. Um, they show good experience in what they're doing um, and they have a good reputation for it. So that's, that's what your character is. For the most part, you know, if you've got some blips here and there, if you've got good explanations, um, then we can certainly take a look at it. But if it's a, just a lack of, hey, I haven't been paying my bills or I'm getting sued because I didn't do this right or that, then that that's where we're going to say from a credit side, no, we don't feel comfortable with actually doing a loan for this person or that person. Capacity to pay. We need to see whether or not you can pay back this loan. Okay. And that even on a projections based. So if you give us two, three years project projections, right. Um, and those projections, you give us explanations along with those projections. How are you going to get to that revenue? Okay. How are you going to get there? Now, what are your costs associated? Your cost of goods sold? What does that look like? So then what does your gross margin look like? Those are really important. And then on top of that, what do your fixed and variable expenses look like? So all those things come into play and you're telling us how you're getting there from uh, to your revenue, your revenues. OK, but then how you're you're paying it, what your your uh, pricing is, um, what your fixed costs are associated with running this business. And then, of course, it goes all the way down to where your net income and, and your ability to pay uh, this loan back. So those are all the things when the SBDC is helping you get those projections done, they're also asking you the why and how you're getting there to those projections, okay? Capital, that's the money you're putting in, okay? So you need to put 10 to 20% in, in most cases it's 10%, into the deal. OK, so if you're doing a hundred thousand dollar startup, you need to have ten thousand dollars. It just that's at the minimum. OK, if you're looking to buy a business, that's a hundred thousand. You need to have ten thousand dollars to put into the deal. Um, but not only do you have to have the money to put in, but you need to have money after you close. OK, so you need to have what we call post closing liquidity. So what that is, is, okay, I put in 10,000 and now I don't have any more money. That's not good. The bank wants to see, let's say three to three to six months, at least I would say six months, you're starting a business, six months of, of liquid cash uh, to make your payments essentially. So if there is a rough patch, you have money that you can go into personally, you're not going out to borrow again but you're bringing in more personal cash into your business, okay? So that's what the bank wants to see, pre and post closing liquidity, okay? A lot of people don't understand, well, I need money to start the business, but I don't have the money. And yes, sometimes it's the chicken before the egg and sometimes it's okay, maybe I need to save up more money or maybe I need to get a partner or maybe I need to, I need to reconsider or figure out a different way to actually get to my goal of starting or growing my business. Okay. And it's again, talking to people like myself, talk, talking to the SBDC and trying to figure out the best way to do it. Okay. Um, conditions. What are the current economic conditions? What are the uh, conditions in the industry? Um, you need to know that. Again, the SBDC can help you with pulling a lot of that information. Um, they can help you, and that's going to be, and I'll go into your business plan a little bit, but all this information, the SBDC can actually help you with. And identifying competition, you may already know the competition, especially if you're getting into that area or been into that area for a long time and know what you're going to do and what you're going to do differently when you, when you uh, grow or start, start your new business. And then collateral. We kind of already spoke to, to collateral a little bit. So your collateral is, do you have the business assets? And if you don't have the business assets, do you have the personal assets? If you don't have the personal assets, do you have everything else that's going to be able to get you to where you can, you can apply for a loan 
through the SBA and get a yes. So as long as it, all the other pieces are there, I would say the collateral is probably the easiest part for the banks to, to get over when we have the SBA guarantee involved. So typical loan structures uh, for me, um, we do have, I, I only do 350,000 to 5 million. The max for the program is 5 million. We can go above that by adding a conventional loan to it. Um, and we, we mirror everything uh, exactly the same. It's called a Parapasu loan. Um, it's actually a, um, uh, it, it, they share collateral, which that's all Parapasu means. Now, loan sizes that are less than uh, 350,000, we'll do loans from 50,000 up to um, that 350,000 or actually 500,000 now, um, where you'll actually deal with one of my counterparts that does our small loan program. Uh, that's not for startups. We don't have a startup um, uh, for that, the small loan program. But if not, I certainly have people I can get you in touch with um, that can help you uh, in starting up your business. If you're in that small, small range um, that, uh, that I partner with, that SBDC partners with, um, that can certainly help you out. And it's, it's the same type of SBA lending that we're talking about now. Um, as I said before, 10% or, or more down is your, is your required equity injection. Now, your equity injection cannot be, in most cases, borrowed funds, okay? Um, you can use gifts. A lot of people get gifts. Um, and then it must be taxed dollars. Uh, so no mattress money. No, hey, I just found a bag of $50,000. I'm going to go and get an SBA loan. Can't, we have to account for that money. So we have to um, get to at least two months of bank statements to know what, where that money was sourced from. Um, that's the one of the big hiccups in some cases. Um, loan proceeds used for. The SBA 7A program, you can use for just about anything from a real estate. And this can be all in a combination and all in one loan, not multiple loans. You can have different buckets, so you can have a you can purchase real estate and do um, do some uh, upfits to that real estate. You can do ground up construction uh, with it with um, and then you can add in your furnitures and fixtures. You can go ahead and do a business acquisition or a partner buyout. Um, you can do a, a business a business expansion by acquisition. Um, there's so many different ways that you can actually get into a business that maybe is, like I said, with acquisitions, they're already in business. They're already doing well. All you're doing is bringing in your expertise. That is a lot. That's probably the easiest way that I recommend that people get into businesses a lot of times. Um, and identifying people that are, that are retiring or just, they built up the business, they're tired, they want to move on, that type of thing. Um, we, we want to see direct in industry experience. That is a big key. So if you're going to be opening up a restaurant, but you used to be, let's say, you used to cut trees for a living, but you've never been in a restaurant business and you want to open one up, that's going to be kind of hard. But if you identify somebody that can actually run the front of the house, run the back of the house, and you as uh, who had a tree business before, ran it very successfully, you had the business acumen, you still have the restaurant experience. So you need to identify that, that person or persons to help you run that. So they're going to be key employees for you. That's something that, that we need to, uh, that you need to know and identify and let, let the bank know um, when you're applying for the SBA loan. And that goes to the business plan. And that's talking about, okay, um, the projections with assumptions that we talked about earlier, uh, talking about being very clear and concise with what kind of products and services that you're going to provide, um, what your role in the business is going to be. Um, like I just had mentioned, you may have business acumen, but maybe not in that particular industry. So we just need to know you're going to be running the business, but you're not going to be doing all the day to day stuff, maybe in a restaurant, or, you know, because you've hired those key employees to do those. But you're making the, the good sound business um, decisions. 
Um, we need to understand what the team looks like, uh, succession plan. If it's just you, what happens if, if that happens to you? You may have to have life insurance or you may be grooming somebody to, to take over the business at some period in time. Um, pricing. Um, what, what type of pricing are you looking for? Um, and I'll talk about pricing in a little bit, but um, generally an SBA 7A loan is variable. Interest rate based upon prime, which prime right now is eight and a half percent, and it can be prime up to three percent. OK, for some of the small loans, um, they can actually go up to prime plus four and a half percent. So that's anything less than three hundred fifty thousand. All right. Um, we need to know what suppliers uh, you're going to um, be using competition, concentration, marketing plan. So. So as I was saying, the business plan, the SBDC, that's what they're there for. They're fantastic at what they do. I send lots of clients over to them and vice versa. We try to work on what, what, is, what looks good in that business plan, what doesn't look good, what I'd like to see more, what my credit people would like to see more. Um, because at the end of the day, it's the, it is a roadmap to your business, okay? Um, it should be built on all the, the evidence and research that, the, that you have uh, through your experience, but also through the SBDC. They can pull all that information um, and, and ident helping you identify target marketing, really asking you the questions that are going to be very thought provoking. OK, and it's going to go into that business plan. And it's going to be in a lot of cases going to be a lot of things that you didn't think about before. Um, and then, of course, uh, we mentioned capital. Capital is going to be key. Where are you getting that money from? Um, do I have enough? Do I have enough after I close? Uh, and then we've, again, talked about the experience. If you've got the experience, do you need to train the next people? Um, and if so, you know, does that entail, is it training because you're in a franchise? Is it training because you're not in a franchise and you need to, need to identify something else so people can be trained? So, and then finally, know your competition and, and have that in your business plan. Um, so what are the total capital needs? Like I said before, you can put all this stuff into um, a, a, a SBA 7A loan. Up to the 5 million, if it's a good, good business plan, if it's a good reason for us to do it, we can go above that 5 million in a, uh, uh, in a pair of pursuit. Uh, conventional loan. So, um, but it's for machinery and equipment, building and land, uh, construction, renovations, working capital, inventory, furniture, leasehold improvements. Now, I will say when it says land, it's land that you're going to purchase and immediately build on or immediately use, let's say, to house your machinery and equipment. It's not land for future development. And a lot of people so you can't buy something and have excess, all this excess land because you have a future thought about developing it. We may have to break that up. So just know that uh, a lot of people don't don't realize that that's what we need to do. So talked to talked a lot about the cash and equity that you're bringing to the table. I mentioned that you can use some borrowed money if, if you need to. Let's say we have we've got all the collateral we need and you can you can borrow money from your home. You you decide, hey, I'm going to do a home equity loan and I'm going to borrow that money out of my home equity loan. Now, here's the key. Uh, in order to do that, you have to have outside income outside of the um, small business concern, your your personal business to pay that loan back. So if you have a spouse that can, uh, that has a, uh, has a job and they can pay it back with, with their, um, with their job, then you can borrow the money. If you have a pension or if you have a, a any type of retirement outside of this, obviously, and it can, it can pay that back, do the HELOC. Um, but that's only, and I, I'm going to stress this is only if we've taken all the um, the collateral, the personal collateral, we have all of it that we need. Because at the end of the day, we really would prefer you you 
have that money to put in, maybe get a gift or something like that. But we'd rather have the real estate um, as collateral to get us as close as possible to 100% collateralization. Okay. And then, so now I'm going to go on to some examples just to give you some, you know, I've been going through some examples and we'll have some questions and answer or question and answer session. Um, so the first example is I'm an attorney. I make $150,000 a year. I'm looking at purchasing a restaurant for 50,000 in Florida that has been in business for 10 years. The business cash flows very well. I'll keep running my job as an attorney and the GM will run the restaurant. I can put 20% down. The loan will fully uh, be fully secured because I own a million dollar home free and clear. Okay. So example one, the pros 20% down doesn't really need to, because it's a business acquisition. We can do 10%. He does have outside income. That's fantastic. Um, fully secured. Okay. Um, it, the business has been around for a long period of time. And then it has good flat, good cash flow. What are the cons here? It is hospitality industry. He doesn't have any direct experience and he's not there to see day-to-day -day operations. So it's in Florida. He's not even around in Florida. Okay. It doesn't say where he is, unfortunately, but for this purpose, it was, he's in Georgia, let's say, um, and not close to the restaurant. So he's going to be an absentee owner. Unless he's going to, he has business down there and I've done deals like this where they're down in, let's say it's Orlando and they're down there uh, at least once a month or twice a month or something like that. And they're more hands-on. They're not just absentee. Okay. So we could get over that, but how it is right now where he's just going to be letting somebody else do it. It's more of a passive business for him. So that's where we've got to figure out how much are they involved? Because you as business owners, y'all are fully involved. So we want you to have the hands on as much as possible. Okay. Example number two, I've been working uh, at Bob's HVAC business for seven years. My boss, the owner is retiring and wants to sell his business to me for $750,000. He's owned the business for 32 years. I've been saving money and have around seventy-five to hundred thousand to put down. My house is around fifty thousand in equity, but I suppose the loan would be over a half a million dollars unsecured. Pretty tough. But pros: ten percent down, experience with the company, business been around for a long time. It's got good cash flow. Cons: unsecured. Guess what? That one thing, unsecured, that's covered by our SBA guarantee. That's the type of business that we want to see. We love to see employees take over. It's great. That means they have a good relationship with their current boss. They already know. They know most of the relationships. Um, it's all about uh, how that business is going to continue to be successful. Okay. And then example number three, I'm a dentist and have been working at Sue's Dental Practice for a year. The owner is looking to retire and sell the business to me. Only been a dentist for one year as this is my first job out of school. However, the other dentist has been there for 10 years and wants to stay at the practice even after I buy it. I have 20% to put down, but 15% of that money is being gifted from my parents. I own a home with $80,000 $80, in equity. Sue is selling the practice for $1.5 million and it has been around since 1987. Okay. So, Experience at, at, at the practice and direct industry, existing dentist is willing to stay on 20% down, some equity in the house, 5% of the money coming from the buyer, longstanding company. Um, cons, most of the money is gifted. Um, short time in the practice or field and a large loan that will be mostly un unsecured. I'll say that the money being gifted it just depends on how much money is being gifted and how much money is after um, is there out, uh, you know, after the uh, the sale of the business. Um, short time in a practice field. Yes, that's a little bit difficult. But what kind of over we look at is the existing de dentist is willing to stay on consult uh, and will most probably help that person with actually uh, running the business. 
in some way, shape, or form. Um, and then a large loan that will mo mostly be unsecured. We've got a question mark there just because, you know, we've got a couple, couple things to overcome. But due to the industry, most probably, I would say this would be a yes. So, um, and those are the three examples just really quickly that I wanted to go over. But uh, we're about 40 minutes into the presentation. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have about the presentation. Um, if you have something truly, truly specific, I can certainly talk to you offline. Um, but I'd love to take some, some you know, good generic questions now. Mark, we've got a few in the chat box. So um, can grant funds be used towards the down payment? say a 30 or 60K grant and use that for large expansion? Um, it just, it, as long as we can source where it came from, yes. Um, we just have to understand what it was used for. And if you're doing an expansion, in a lot of cases with an expansion, you've already put in your money, your equity. So you may not have to put in additional money. And that but the grant money is is kind of icing on the cake. It really it does help out. So answer for an expansion, yes. Thank you. So here's another. Do you know anyone who had an approved loan for a residential assisted living home? Do I do I know anybody that hadn't had an approved loan for a residential assisted living? Um, I mean, yes, I mean. We've approved those plenty of times. So, I mean, is, is it for an existing or is it for one that is um, trying to get up and running? Because those are usually harder to get just because of the, the, um, the laws that are around it. So you're looking at the difference between a purchase of an existing business and a startup business, correct? Yes. So here's another question. Do 401k loans count the same as home loan borrowing? So, um, yes, it's all because one, if you're going to borrow from your 401k, um, are you, it most probably you're still going to be with the company. So the question is, are you staying with the company? Or are you doing this part time? Um, it still needs to show that you can outside. I mean, if you're still going to be working for that other company, you're still going to be paying your 401k back um, anyway. So it's, you're going to be using that outside income, but yes, we still look at it as borrowed funds. Now there is another whole, whole no, another deal where you can uh, actually do a, uh, you know, pull out of a 401k and, and uh, use it, and we try to shy away from using the 401k as much as possible because that is going to be your um, your retirement at the end of the day. Any other questions? Here's another. Are the opportunities, excuse me, are the opportunities for startups for therapy practice utilizing micro loans. Yeah, I mean, you certainly can do micro loans. And that's um, one of the partners that I was, uh, I, I didn't mention by name, but there's there's quite a few that can do micro loans. Um, and they'll do it for for uh, therapy practices to go in there to, you know, to help with uh, working capital to help with maybe small leasehold improvements. Um, they're really looking at, you know, doing their, their huge niche is usually ten to $25,000 for startups. Mark, um, here's another. Does it matter if you register as an LLC versus an S-Corp? Um, is this in relation to a loan or I'm not sure exactly the nature of the question, Missy? Yeah. I mean, as far as whether to be an LLC or an S Corp, number one thing I tell people is to consult with your um, CPA 
or tax tax attorney. The reason why is because it depends on how your the type of business that you're in, how you're going to be taking your income, and how you just want to be reported. It doesn't have any effect on um, how you actually uh, whether or not you can get a loan or not. Okay. Let's see. If an LLP or both owners look at in order to get a loan approved, or can it be just one? So in all cases, um, anybody who owns 20% of any business, whether it's through an LLP, LLC, S Corp, C Corp, if you own 20% or more of the business, you do need to guarantee the loan. 